Hey, good Monday morning, everybody. It is the second day of January 2023. I'm Chris Allen here on the SAM channel, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, sponsored by Ace Hardware Marketplace. We've got a uh, warm morning going for us right now. Look at that 60 degrees current temperature in Bowling Green, uh, but we're also dealing with a lot of moisture that's coming in. And today, tonight, tomorrow, even into early Wednesday, we're going to look at at least two, possibly three rounds of showers and thunderstorms, some with heavy rain, gusty winds, and there is a conditional severe weather threat that we'll have to watch out for. So plenty to talk about this morning. And by the way, it's 613 right now as I record this podcast. So obviously I'm not on the radio this morning. My forecast is on the radio, but I'm not on Sam this morning. It's uh, it's a holiday off for us, but still I'm doing the weather this morning. I want to start with the big view of the radar because it will help explain what's getting ready to happen. Now, right now, we're under this warm dome of air. You see this high pressure that's sitting off the Carolinas and the East Coast. Well, the flow here is out of the Southwest, because everything around high pressure goes like the hands on a clock, okay? So then we've got this cluster of systems out West, which all will become... One big system, it's just a series of low-pressure systems riding along the front. And, of course, you know, around low-pressure systems, then we get a counterclockwise flow. And you can see already some showers, thunderstorms. A lot of the activity that's going to get going today that's going to be kind of rough is going to be southwest of us, okay? So... We have yet to see what's going to start here, but eventually Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, parts of Mississippi, maybe southern Missouri, all this area is going to get going with some stronger thunderstorms, and all of that is going to head our direction, eventually being steered by the high pressure to the east and the low pressure systems to the west. So you see how all this just kind of works together. We call that convergence. Eventually, that converging, those converging uh, systems are going to set us up. And here's the main cold front back here toward Albuquerque. It's still way back to the west, but there's a dry line and uh, activity here is just trying to get started this morning around Houston. But eventually, as we go through the day, you're going to be hearing about severe weather starting to take shape back to our south and west. All of this where you see the boxes, the very colorful boxes, that's all winter stuff. Winter weather advisories um, for snow and for ice and all of that. So, yeah, it's uh, that's the colder side of this whole system. We're not going to get the colder side of this system until about Wednesday Wednesday night into Thursday. Up until that time, we're going to stay quite warm here in southern Kentucky as uh, we get a pretty good amount of rain and thunderstorm activity, and it's going to come in several waves, as I mentioned, at least two or three. Here's a look at the model blender. First and foremost, we take a look at the next several days, and as you can see today, Uh, The next couple of days, near record high temperatures, as we've been privy to the last few days, uh, 68, really 70. I I don't see any reason why we won't hit 70 today or close to it. Then only dropping off into the low 60s tonight, so there's not going to be much temperature change from where we are for a high temperature to where we will be for a low temperature by late tonight, early tomorrow, with the rain coming through. And then we'll get close, if not hit 70, 71 tomorrow. Uh, Then we start to see the transition day being Wednesday. Wednesday morning, we'll get the last of the two or three 
rounds or hits of rain and thunderstorms. And then that's when I expect the cold front to come through and we start to cool things down. As you can see, after that, we go back to where we need to be or should be for this time of the year on temperature for the beginning of January, which is around 46, 47, 48 to 50. That's where we should be. And as you can see, starting Thursday, we're going to be there every single day after that through the middle of next week. So once we get past this spring-like storm system, things are going to settle down and we're going to be more in line with uh, where we should be for temperatures for this time of the year. But anytime we get close to 70 in January, that's usually kind of a red flag that uh, we're going to get some kind of nasty weather that doesn't it's not a guarantee like i said at the beginning this is all conditional which i'll break down for you in detail coming up all right let's take a look at current kentucky mesonet temperatures everybody starting out mild this morning in the 50s even close to 60 degrees in a few spots the exception the hills and the valleys over in far eastern kentucky where they're still seeing some 30s and 40s but everybody else is uh, nice and mild this morning all across the Commonwealth. All right, let's take a look at future temperatures now and see what's coming our way. And really, there's not going to be a whole lot of change in our temperatures per se. It's just uh, the temperatures are just going to flex a little bit. We're already in the mid to upper 50s right now. We'll go mid to upper 60s today, breezy conditions. The winds will start to pick up from the south, 10 to 15 to 20, and then we'll get an occasional gust of 30 to 35, especially this afternoon. Warm front making its way through the area with that whole conglomeration of systems that you saw out west and southwest of us. So close to 70, if not hitting 70 this afternoon. Tonight, we'll only back off a few degrees into the mid-60s for overnight lows. Some of you may be low 60s, but then we head right back up into the upper 60s to around 70 again tomorrow. It's once we get into Wednesday. Once we get into Wednesday, we'll watch the cold front come in. You can see by Wednesday morning, this is the powerful cold front that is going to come through with one more shot of showers and thunderstorms and then we're done with that for a while you can see the cooler air taking over as we get into wednesday night into thursday then that's when we'll be only in the 40s but that's not until thursday so wednesday into thursday the transitional period for us to get the cooler air in here Okay, let's get to the nitty-gritty on rain and thunderstorm activity and the possibility of severe weather. Uh, <clears throat> again, uh, I use the word conditional because uh, it's, it's just going to be one of those situations where we just have to see how, mi- how much of a dynamic, it's already a dynamic system, but how much uh, convective potential energy is going to be there, or what we call CAPE. If there's going to be enough there, enough sun energy at times in between storms, uh, can we reload this system to bring us strong to severe storms? It is a possibility, and we have that threat, but it's not a extremely high threat. It's not a December 10th uh, threat. It's not on that level, but still, it's a threat enough to where we're going to have to keep an eye on on what develops. So let's take it hourly, and let's go step by step from right now. There's not much going on. The models here, and yeah, you could have a passing sprinkle or shower. That, that, of course, remains to be a given because we're underneath that warm front, and there's just enough moisture out there to maybe tap into 
a shower as we go through the day. But it's going to be closer to midnight tonight. Uh, We'll see showers and thunderstorms developing this afternoon to the west of us around Paducah, Cape Girardeau, Boot Hill of Missouri, West Tennessee. And a pretty good line of thunderstorms that's going to come in here. This is about 11 o'clock to midnight tonight. And you say, oh man, one of those where it's going to be after dark, it's going to be overnight. Yeah, and it, and it's showing a pretty good line here, but whether this turns severe or not is questionable um, in that we will be after dark, but there could be enough of uh, the uh, what we call the low-level jet that's going to punch in here, enhance this moisture. It could be just nothing more than heavy rain and gusty winds, but the threat here for severe is conditional. So it may or may not happen. We may have a few strong storms, none of them turning severe. But on the flip side of that, at the leading edge of this line, as it comes in about midnight, then we could see a severe thunderstorm or two of that line coming in. This will have to be watched, and I'll watch it no matter what hour. I'll be up. And I'll be watching it, okay? So again, your first round coming in tonight and then around 11 o'clock, midnight. The timing could be a little bit off, but it's going to be late tonight, okay? Early tomorrow morning, that moves on. We see scattered showers going through the day. Not much going on here. Here comes our number two wave. This one a little less organized more of a scattered shower thunderstorm activity around noon tomorrow on Tuesday. And then it's really in between these showers. If the sun comes back out, we start to see these little renegade showers that you see here. This is going to be late in the afternoon. Some of these could maybe be strong to possibly severe. These don't look quite that threatening, but as we get on into the evening hours tomorrow night, you see the deeper red starting to show up, especially back here into Southern Illinois. And then as we get on into say five, six o'clock tomorrow evening, we'll certainly have to watch some of these to become potentially severe, but there's going to be heavy rain regardless of whether these turn to severe thunderstorm warnings or not. But the third and final round is going to come at about 3 to 4 a.m. Wednesday morning. This is the round that can certainly bring us the last big punch of heavy rain and maybe even some severe weather. You see that line. Look at that. That's the cold front. Just ahead of the cold front, there may be enough convective available um, potential energy. There could be enough dynamics with the wind and moisture to maybe do something. And we can't even rule out a brief spin-up tornado. I mean, it's, I I hate to even go there, but we got to leave that as a possibility. It's just the way this system is. But by late Wednesday morning, Wednesday, midday afternoon, all of this is gone. Okay, so by Wednesday, it's out of here. The cooler air takes over and we're done with all that nasty weather. Let's hopefully hope it doesn't get too nasty, but I want to prepare you for the possibility that it will. And so does the National Weather Service. So I'm going to show you what uh, they have put out as far as, first of all, the amount of rainfall that we're looking at. And as you can see by the graphic here, here's Bowling Green, 65. Uh, On the scale here, we're looking at between tonight and Wednesday morning to maybe up to three inches of rain, especially to the west of us. Confidence in rainfall amounts is high. Flooding potential is low. So we'll just Because of the nature of this going in two or three rounds, that's going to give it time to 
whatever water comes in with the first round settles down. Then here comes round two. We get some heavy rain that settles down. Then round three, the final round, then it, it should happen in a way to where we don't, it doesn't happen all at once or the rain doesn't come down continuously. But if you know you live on a road or in an area that is prone to flooding, you may want to watch because uh, we're going to get some heavy rain and that's an issue. Now, what about that severe weather threat? Here it is, and this is mainly tomorrow. As they say, multiple rounds of showers and thunderstorms late tonight through early Wednesday. Isolated strong to severe storms possible. Damaging straight line winds are most likely some small hail and that isolated tornado spin up brief, uh, weaker tornadoes, but still can, you know, do some damage with the winds. And outside of any storms, gusty southerly winds of 30 to 40 tonight um, through Tuesday. Confidence in severe weather, and this is why I say it's conditional, it's low because we almost need to be up close to at least the first round to see how things are going to develop. But this is the outline. They've extended the level one marginal risk. It was just right close to the Tennessee border yesterday, but now it's uh, swung up into uh, at least northern Kentucky, Louisville, Lexington, Frankfurt. Not quite to Cincinnati. The lighter green is just general thunderstorms. But level one marginal threat here in southern Kentucky, northern middle Tennessee, down to the Nashville area. The level two is further south, south Tennessee, northern Alabama, Mississippi. Slight risk for severe storms. So we do have a threat. It is conditional. It is on the low end, but don't discount that. Turn your weather radios on uh, this evening and just stay tuned in case I go live. I'll go live if I see there's a, you know, a real tornado threat or there's a, uh, you know, a real uh, threat for damage and things like that. I'll, I'll be on. Okay. Here's a look at the um, surface map to end the podcast here. We see the warm air that's over us, high pressure as I showed you and drew out on the radar. So we're going to be under the warm dome of air. Severe weather will get going down here where I showed you it was going to get going as we get on into the day. Big area, Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma. Then it spreads. Here's tonight. Showers and thunderstorms over our area. Probably not severe for us, but a few strong storms with heavy rain and gusty winds, certainly possible. Here we go into Tuesday morning, Tuesday midday, Tuesday afternoon, into uh, Wednesday morning. Here comes the front with the heavy rain, with the gusty thunderstorms, and finally by Wednesday afternoon, this is over. And the cooler air starts to come in back behind it. And uh, that's when we stay fairly quiet for the rest of the week, Wednesday, Thursday, well, Thursday, Friday that we're looking at. And into Saturday, we do see a little bit of a warm up and another front that could come in with a small chance of showers. This looks like because high pressure will be doing the Pac-Man effect and eating away at whatever comes in fairly weak system. So I don't anticipate much from that. And then high pressure takes over for next Monday, a week from today. And it stays fairly quiet, but it is going to be cooler after that. So to summarize, let's count on at least two, but maybe three, three, (laughs) get the fingers to work, three rounds of showers and thunderstorms Every one of those rounds will have the potential for heavy rain, gusty winds, at least. And then we're going to pick up, as you saw, maybe two to three inches of rain. That's going to cause some minor flooding in a couple of spots, just maybe. Then 
the conditional threat for severe weather with any one of those two to three rounds of thunderstorms, one coming in around midnight tonight, one around noon tomorrow, and then the last one will come in early as you're getting ready to go to work Wednesday morning. So all three of those will have to be watched, and I'll keep an eye on it. Turn your weather radios on. Keep that little black button turned on if you've got a Midland weather radio like we've sold. Uh, that's all you have to do is just leave it turned on, and it'll go off if there's any warnings. Okay, And if it's general severe weather, like a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings, and I'm not going to be on here or on the radio. You'll get the instant bulletins from the National Weather Service if you listen to Sam 100.7 FM and on your weather radio. But if it looks like it's going to be something tornadic, then I'll be on here and on the radio at the same time. Okay. Whenever that happens. Thanks for watching, you guys. Hope you had a great New Year's. I'm back on the radio tomorrow, unless we get something, uh, you know, quirky happening uh, late tonight. In the meantime, God bless you. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you back here tomorrow morning.